Good morning, Gloria. So good to see you. Hi. Um, so, oh, just a correction. It's my, the murder of my niece's fiance's mother. It's not, not the fiance's mother. Um, um, but as mentioned earlier, our theme for this week is wise choices and the well-lived life. And so that's what we want to look at today. You know, um, wise choices, making choices, wise ones. And even though, you know, we're sometimes unaware, every day and throughout the day, we are making choices. You know, some choices are inconsequential. Like, you know, should I wear blue jeans or black jeans? You know, or should I go to Starbucks or coffee bean? <laughs> but there are some choices that can carry major consequences. So it is, def it is therefore important for us to choose wisely. You know, I saw a funny clip uh, the other day of someone who made a dumb choice and it was a hilarious outcome. Um, so many of you may remember the classic movie Sing in the Rain starring Gene Kelly. And you know there's that iconic scene um, where he's singing and he's swinging on the lamppost. You got that you got the picture, honey? No, not that one. thought it was a good idea at the moment, I thought, so if you see the other video. Oh, oh. So, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Not such a wise choice. <laughs> you know, the, the next slide. And the next slide says, you may be free to make whatever choice you want, but you're not free from the consequences of that choice. And that is certainly a truism. So um, how we live as Christians is very important. It's very important. The Apostle Paul said, we must not be unwise. And this means that we must have wisdom to govern how we live. You know, but what is wisdom and where does it come from? You know, wisdom, according to the dictionary definition, is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. That's the quality of being wise. But wisdom in the Bible is not just an intellectual thing. It does include intellectual understanding, but biblical wisdom comes from God. It comes from understanding the will of God. And so, this is why it says in Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6, it says, Trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. And so, our passage today is Ephesians 5, 15 through 20. And it says, and this is the New Revised Standard Version. And it says, be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. It says, do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God, the Father, at all times, for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus. And so before I unpack the scripture, I just want to set the stage a little. And you know, God has a plan for humanity. And ultimately, he wants us to have a relationship with all his, he wants to have a relationship with all his human children, 
He wants to live with us forever. He wants us to live with him. But it, this cannot be a forced relationship. So he's given humanity free will to make choices. You see, because he wants us to make the choice to love him. He wants us to make the choice whether to love him or not. He wants us to make the choice to walk in obedience to him. You know, we also know that God sent Jesus into the world to save the world through his death for our sins and his resurrection. He, he, he died for our sins and he was resurrected to life and through that we are saved. And his plan from all humanity is that all men may come to him. All men may know him. All men may come to the knowledge of the truth. And at the end of the age, God will bring all things under the rulership of Jesus. But before Jesus left the earth to go back to the Father, he gave his disciples the great commission. And that was for them to go into the world, to go into all the world, and to preach the gospel. And so that everyone will have the opportunity to choose Jesus and to receive salvation. This is the commission. This is the commission of the church and to every believer. We have been given the commission to go into all the world. But we know that this is an evil and a dark world. But we are no longer in darkness. As believers, we are the children of the light. We are children of God. We are Jesus is. We belong to Jesus. So we are the children of the light. But there is a certain way that we must live in this world. We must live in this world wisely. So the passage today in Ephesians 5.16, you know, um, I read it in the, the New Revised Standard Version, but I kind of like just this one verse in um, the New American Standard Version. It says, so be careful how you walk. You know, the other one says, be careful how you live. And this says, be careful how you walk. So it made me kind of think of, you know, imagine that you're walking along a trail, because you, you're going on this hike out in the desert or forest or in the mountains. But before you get on the trail, you are told that there are rattlesnakes in a particular area, and that there's poison ivy in another area. And at another spot, there is like a steep slope and you can easily slip, so you're warned not to, to kind of stay on the path, don't veer off. And so having this knowledge, you would use wisdom, right? You would wis and you'd be very careful of how you walk, especially in the areas that you've been warned about. When you step, how close you get to the slope, you know, you wouldn't just go barging along, you know, not paying attention to how you're walking you know, just foolishly stepping everywhere and anywhere, because depending on how you walk, there will be either negative or positive consequences. You see, you have to use wisdom as you walk, as you live in this life, because we live in a new world. So the theme of the passage is really contrasting wisdom and foolishness. You know, earlier in the, in the passage in, in Ephesians 5, it does, the, there are other things that's also contrasted. It includes love versus lust, light versus darkness. You know, the Bible writers, they, they often use that technique when they wanted to contrast one thing with another, and that's to grab our attention. So in this case, it's foolishness, it's wisdom versus foolishness. And um, so um, in verses 15 through 16, Paul is making it clear that we have to carefully consider our choices. You know, we are, we are uh, encouraged to consider how we spend our time, how we utilize the time that God has given us. We live in a world where there's rebellion against God. It's an evil world because Paul knew that living for Christ often brought hostility and violence from unbelievers. You know, he realized that each day could be his last. You see, Paul was beaten. He was shipwrecked. He was stoned. He was imprisoned for the gospel. And he often doubted whether he would live to see another day. You know, so life is short. You agree? Life yes. is short. Yeah. You know, even if you're a teenager like my daughter in the back, life is short. 
you know, because we live in an evil world, and you don't know when it's your time. That's right. You don't know when it's your last day. You know, Steve just mentioned about my niece's a mother-in-law to be. She was so violently taken from us, and she was only 48. You know, we don't know when that, the end will come for us. So we need to ask ourselves, are we using time wisely? And that does not mean, just am I busy doing this or that? Because you know, we could be busy doing the wrong thing. You know, you could be busy even doing good things, but is it God, a God thing that you're doing? You know, if we spend our time on the internet just researching and researching um, all the good things other people are doing, and we never ever get up to do something good ourselves, is that really doing a good thing? Is that, are we really using, spending the time wisely? Is that God's will? You know? So, um, verse 17 says, do not be foolish. Do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So, this is kind of reminding us that we are presented with opportunities, both good and evil, and we have to choose properly. You know, by thinking through the implications and the consequences of what we do. You know, we can't just live, go, you know, really, really in the world. So, so as we continue, you know, I think it's, it's important for us to understand just have a basic understanding of the human brain and how it works in making decisions. You know, and, and so this information comes from a combination of psychology today and an article titled Organizational Behavior. So uh, when the human brain processes information for decision making, it involves two systems, the reflective system and the reactive or the emotional system. And so the decisions we make are a result of the interaction between these two systems. You see, the emotional part of the brain, which is kind of in the back, <laughs> is more spontaneous, it's more reactive, and it doesn't always consider consequences. You know, it's the part of the brain that produces feelings of fear, anger, joy, anxiety, hunger, you know, whereas, the reflective side allows you to control your emotions. It allows you to think logically. It allows you to learn, to predict, and to plan. So, an example of this would be, when you're driving on the freeway and someone cuts you off, mm -hmm. the emotional side will want you to tailgate that person and cut them off yeah. also at the first opportunity. <laughs> but the reflective side, says, mm, that may not be the best, nor the safest course of action. Yeah. So, you know, of course we know that the emotional side is important. Because, you know, if you're confronted by a big grizzly, you know, you will immediately feel fear and you'll know whether to fight, probably not for a drink with a grizzly, or to take flight. <laughs> you know. But, you know, the emotional side tends to dominate and it sometimes clouds our judgment. That sometimes we do the things that we don't want to do. You know, Paul even said that, I do the things that I do not. And I know I've been there, you know, sometimes, you know, someone says something to you that you don't like, and you immediately snap back. And then you think, ah, I should have just shut my mouth. You know, I didn't have to go there. You know, or it could be that, you know, um, you know, you see that enticing triple chocolate fudge sundae with a cherry on top, <laughs> you know, and you think, oh, that could give you so much joy right now. And, and you know you shouldn't because you're cutting back on sweets and you yeah. know it's not good for you, but you go for it anyway. <laughs> you know. So, you know, becoming more aware of how uh, choices can be driven by our emotions it helps us to take the extra time to just allow that reflective side to consider the consequences more carefully. So, so we're going to continue in, in Ephesians. Ephesians 20, 18 through 20. 18 says, And do not, do not get drunk with wine in which there is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. You know, so do not get drunk 
do not drink too much alcohol as it leads to overindulgence, excessiveness, but that's pretty much what debauchery means, you know, pleasing to the self, sensual pleasures, you know, because what happens is, is it cheapens our life, it impairs judgment, and it leads us to make unwise decisions. It even affects our speech. You know, yeah. I'm sure most of us have seen someone, you know, when they're drunk. Mm -hmm. But you know what, it, it especially, it particularly cheapens our view of ourselves and others. You know, but the drinking is not the only, only problem here. You know, drinking too much is not the only way that we can think less of ourselves and others. You know, if you have no empathy for others, or yourself, you can become judgmental, and we can put others down, and we forget that we are all created in the image of God. In another way, we can have feelings of superiority, and we can create division between people is when we refuse to be open to new information that might change the way we think. You know, so, you know, someone may be telling, giving you some new information, and it's correct. But you just feel that your opinion, you don't care if it's correct, my opinion is right, you are wrong, you are beneath me, and I don't want anything to do with you. And we, we see that so much today where everybody has their opinion and, and, and it causes so much division, you know. Um, but instead, you know, the verse 18 says, instead of being filled with the spirits, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know be filled with the Holy Spirit. If we're filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, we will have, you know, Galatians 5.22 tells us the fruit of the Spirit. You see, the fruit of the Spirit is love, it is joy, it is peace, forbearance or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Self-control helps us to make good choices. So this is what we need to drink deeply of. We need to drink deeply of all that Jesus is and what he gives us. And it goes on that we're the same psalms. Where is it? Um, uh, don't, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with, uh, uh, with your heart to the Lord. So um, we need to worship, worship God. You know, in, in other words, you know, we, Sing, you know, when, yeah. when, when your heart is weary, sing, praise, yeah. you know, um, or when you feel angry, you know, that will calm your, calm you if you sing and make melody to the Lord. Because you see, when we're in tune with the Holy Spirit, He guides our choices and we become more thankful. We will have more joy in our lives. You know, when we are filled with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, we are able to throw off our old judgmental attitudes and our feelings of either inferiority and superiority. You know, we begin to treasure God's creation. We begin to see the beauty in what God has created. We can more clearly see the goodness of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit at work in just ordinary circumstances. And then we can offer thanksgiving and praise, giving thanks to God the Father. That's what it says in verse 20. Giving thanks to God the Father at all times for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what it is is that this verse just encourages us to show our reverence for what God has given us. The life that he has given to each one of us. He's given us each other. He's given us time on this earth. So we need to just show reverence to him, be happy, be thankful. You see, because what we do and how we live is how we honor God. So numbing ourselves with alcohol or a lack of empathy or selfishness, it limits our ability to experience the fullness of life. You know, that, that a person who's filled with the Holy Spirit will experience, we won't be able to experience that. So decisions, decisions. How can we apply what we've discussed today to making more godly decisions? Well, one of the things we can do 
we can carefully consider consequences of our choices. You know, we, could, we should understand how easily human beings are driven by emotions. All of us are so driven by emotions. So it, this may mean that you pause and you take a deep breath before you respond to a heated conversation. Or you can tell someone, look, I'll get back to you in a decision, rather than just bowing off <coughs> on the spur of the moment. Tell them you'll think about it. You know, sometimes that, you know, I know uh, therapists and, and, and counselors, they tell you count to 10 or something, you know, just to give yourself that time to think logically, to think calmly. And number two is that you prayerfully ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Also, ask for wisdom, ask for insight, ask for loving kindness, because that is so lacking, love, loving kindness. It's so hard to find kindness in the world. So ask for wisdom, insight, and loving kindness. And become aware, number three, become aware of how you might cheapen your own life or others' lives. You know, drinking too much alcohol may not be an issue. But <coughs> lack of empathy, kindness, and the lack of acceptance of yourself or others, it rejects the image of God in each one of us. When you, when you hate yourself, when you hate others, that's rejecting God because we are made in the image of God. So, you know, we, we, we have to be aware of that. Also, number five, do not compare yourself with others. Galatians 6, verse 4. Do not compare. You know, because you know when we compare, we're either going to be feel inferior or superior. So don't compare, but strive to remember God's unconditional love for all. So, oh, I have two fives here. Number six. Be filled with gratitude for God's presence in our lives. Be filled with gratitude. You know, recognize the ordinary joys. Like just a morning cup of coffee. I like my cup of joe. <laughs> morning cup of coffee or tea, a warm bath. You know, a smile of a loved one. You know, um, I love when the, you know, my family, we're together. You know, I love that. You know, just, you know, when I'm almost home. Or I love, you know, my extended family. Sometimes we forget to, we take that for granted, you know, because you don't know how long you're going to have them. You know, so just learn to just appreciate the, the things that God has given us, the small things, the big things, all and everything in between. Just offer praise to God each day for anything that puts a smile on your face. You know, sometimes I look outside and I see the little hummingbird. You know, we, we have a we have a, a little dove that is perched on our, uh, our pillow there. And, um, you know, he leaves a mess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but at the same time, I appreciate, you know, because, well, I think it's she. She's pretty, you know. <laughs> so appreciate the, the, the things of God. You know, so what it is in our passage in Ephesians 5, 15 through 20, it invites us to think deeply about our choices and how we might exercise our God-given free will. You know, that's God-given. We have free will. And we have to know how to exercise it in the most loving way. You know, we can't use our free will for evil. We must use it for good. So we have to exercise it in the most loving way. You know, um, you know, because too often we just make our decisions hastily without taking the time to consider the consequences. So we need to pray for wisdom, you know, pray for wisdom, you know, don't just uh, make decisions without praying for wisdom or noticing the blessings that are around you. Sometimes when you notice the blessings that are around you, you make a different decision. Um, so we forget that our emotions can push us to make choices without considering the consequences. You know, you can want to seek revenge on someone who's done something to you, but there may be some terrible consequences if we, if we take revenge into our hands. So we must consider the consequences. <coughs> it's because we do not need to be trapped 
into making the same poor choices over and over again. You know, we can't break that cycle of poor choices. You know, um, in Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19, God tells us that the wisest decision we can make is to choose life. Choose life. You know, that that is eternal life, but it's also life abundant. Make the choices that will allow you to live the abundant life in Christ. So, careful consideration of consequences, prayer, self-awareness, and gratitude help us enjoy this God-given gift of a life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.